All right, guys, I'm going to let Coach open it up here, and then we'll get into questions. Okay, uh, just to start off on the injury uh, front, I do have an injury report. Uh, you know, after the game uh, this morning, Braden Smith came in and talked with our trainers, had, had a foot injury. So we'll monitor that and, and see uh, the significance of that as we go. Uh, just as far as summary of the game after watching the tape, mostly what we said yesterday um, against good teams like the Seattle Seahawks, there's not much of a margin of error. And really what, what, what we saw on tape was a little bit of feast or famine, you know, on both sides of the ball. I thought special teams played pretty good. So I, I'd say that at the outset, I thought our special teams unit was solid. Um, offensively and defensively, I think it was a little bit feast or famine. And that's just not good enough um, for us as coaches, as players. So we all got to do better. You know, offensively, you know, I thought we had we had three scoring drives that were longer. We had another drive that ended up, you know, on the fourth down stop that was about a 60 yard drive. So, you know, there's four drives that are good, but then we also had, I believe, four three and outs. And, you know, that's not going to do it. And, you know, I just so you guys know those three and outs, I take that personally. I take that personally, meaning that's my fault. You know, I think, you know, there's one or two three and outs in a game is, is common, right, for most any offense. But four three and outs is too many. And as the play caller and with the role I have in the offense, I, I got to do a better job there. Um, you know, and then defensively, it was a little bit the same thing, a little bit feast or famine. Uh, you know, when we were good, we were we were really good. Um, stopping the run, you know, getting them out, three and out, number of three and outs for them. Obviously, that second half especially. Um, but but then just too many, too many big plays, um, too many long touchdown drives. So, um, Good stuff to show, you know, we, there's a feeling of frustration, but what we talked about this morning was, you know, the frustration should fuel our focus, that the frustration should fuel our focus. And I believe that, uh, you know, we walk through these mistakes, we, we, meet, we meet on the film with these guys. I felt a good, a good sense from the guys that, hey, we're ready to go, put this one behind us, learn from it, digest it, and uh, get ready and use it as preparation for this next game. All right, Zach Kiefer. Mike, we talked about the offensive line yesterday, and I'm curious what you saw in the tape. Um, one thing that jumped out to me was you didn't have Jack or Mo Alley on the left side helping very often. Did I see that right? And, and what was the thinking behind that? And now that you watched it, do you wish you had helped a little bit more on the left side? Yeah, no, that's, that's a good observation, Zach. You, you're, seeing, you're seeing it exactly right. And just like you said, we did have him over there a few times. Um, and as you know, Right. The, the, the best way to help a left uh, a tackle, any tackle, is to put a tight end next to him. You can also help him with the running back. Um, we did do that a few times. Uh, but then sometimes that we were going to help with the running back, they brought pressure. And so it pulled the back off off the help. And then the other and then the other gen, general rule, this is uh, not giving up any trade secrets. This is every team in the NFL is that when you're doing quicker rhythm stuff, right, you, you don't help tackles on the three and five step drop stuff. But, um, and then looking back on actually last night, um, you know, I, I text, uh, I text Chris or to, was talking to him late. I can't remember what it was. I said, maybe we should have helped out a little bit more. But when I watched the tape, I thought for the number of times, I, I thought it was okay, to be honest. And, and I'm pretty critical on myself. Um, you know, Julian, Julian did fine. I mean, you know, he got beat twice. Um, there was one time we were supposed to have help. And, and we didn't get the chip help that we wanted to get on the play because Seattle did something and they, and they fooled us. So credit to them. But um, overall, the protection aspect was, you know, probably not up to our standards. Zach, as you mentioned last night, it is a little bit like what I said. There's more to it than just the offensive line play. So we need to be better. We need to be better as coaches. We need to be better as players um, in that area. We have very high standards. Yet. Stephen Holder. Hey, Frank, um, this is a random and probably really dumb question, but um, with the number changes that are going around the league this year, there's some funky numbers being worn by players on both sides. Did you guys spend any time on that at all, just out of necessity this year? I'm not, this is not relevant to your game. It's just a general question. Yeah, um, no, go ahead. No, yeah, did, is that something you guys had to just take any time, uh, devote any time to? Because you're looking at tape from last year, particularly for week one, I imagine. It might have been an issue. I don't know. Yeah, it is different looking at those defensive ends in, in, in low numbers. So you got to get used to that. So that's why when we practice against, you know, we have them wearing jerseys. That does take a little bit getting used to. So um, I, I don't think anybody's crazy about it, to be honest with you. But, I, you know, I understand it is what it is. So, um, 
you got to spend a little bit of time on it. You're right, Stephen. You got to spend a little bit of time. And the way that you do that is, you know, obviously watching the tape, but then whenever we're out there running scout team cards, we're making sure that they have those jersey numbers on. Greg Doyle. Sorry, a small follow up to what you mentioned earlier about Braden Smith, and then my my real question: his foot is it is this in the Quentin Nelson, Carson no. Wentz deal? No, uh, no, not it's, it's a different kind of injury. So not sure the full ramifications of it just yet. Um, hopefully we sh we'll get that figured out in the next couple of days. Okay. And then Carson having so few practices, not just period, but with new teammates and all that. It seemed like if we were going to list the reasons why the game didn't go the way it went, I don't even know if he makes the list. Um, what do you – you saw it on film, though. What do, you, what do you think about how he played after digesting it? Yeah, we just, you know, been meeting all morning on, just got done meeting with him. And what, you know, what we said was a lot of good. I mean, I thought he threw the ball accurately. I thought his post-snap decisions were, were very good. I thought his command of the huddle, you know, I'm not in there, but get – you know, there's one or two times where – we got behind on the eight ball. Not, you know, we had the one there was confusion. We had a substitution confusion thing, and he did a great job of getting the snap off. So a couple of those things. Um, I thought he looked poised, under control. Um, you know, there were a couple of pre-snap things that we need to clean up that we've talked about. But um, you know, a lot, a lot of positive things. George Bremer protecting the football, Greg. That was another big deal, right? I mean, you know, protecting the football. Uh, we did have the fumble snap. I'm sorry, Conti, but you know, really, just that on that quarterback sneak on that fourth down. But in the pocket, he was good, and and obviously not throwing any interceptions was good. All right, George. Let's look ahead to next week. Um, obviously, a different quarterback style with Stafford from from Russell Wilson. But do you expect a similar scheme with the Seahawks' new offensive coordinator having come from this system? Yeah, I think it'll be. I think it'll be very similar. Very similar. Um, another good, you know, very, another good, another very good offense, obviously. Um, so, and I think it all starts with, uh, the ability to stop the run and, and, uh, you know, all the big plays they make in the passing game. So many of them are predicated on, on their ability to have a good running game. And I think that's what they've done well. So, um, if we're going to have success, um, you know, we're going to have to stop the run. Mike Chappell. Frank, two questions. Any update or expectations on Eric Fisher uh, availability yeah, this week? Or yeah, no update. Um, you know, I'm encouraged from last week. You know, I guess that would be the only update. But, you know, he's still kind of fresh out of everything. So we're just going to take it day by day. The other question is, and I don't know whether it was game plan design or, or what the game forced you to do, but f 15 passes to your running backs, whether they were designed or check downs, was that game related, protection related, or a little bit of everything? A little bit of everything. Um, you know, we threw, I forget how many screens, right? And I thought our screen game was really good. What I was disappointed about our screen game, like all of our screens, except for the one that we had, the one that we got snapped at the very last second, all of our screens were very productive. But, you know, when, if you talk about wanting to have more chunk plays, like, you know, we came out of that game saying we lacked getting chunk plays. You know, whatever the six screens that we, you know, two of those screens needed to be 20 plus plays and, and there was opportunity for them to be 20 plus plays, but we didn't, we didn't get that done in the screen game, but they were good, but we needed a couple of them to be big, bigger than they were. Um, and, and then a couple of them chap, as you alluded to, where we had shots called, we did have shots called down the field and you know, and they're playing a coverage, they're playing a coverage that they took it away. They took away the shot. And so, I thought Carson two or three times did a good job of bam, not forcing the shot. It's not there. Take the check down. You know, one time to Jonathan in the flat gains about eight yards. Another time over the middle, we're trying to hit Mo on a corner route, but he hits uh, he, he hits Jonathan in the middle. We gain eight yards um, because it's not there. Another time we got another shot called. Um, they rolled the coverage differently than they had been doing, um, so we didn't get. We didn't get a chance to take it, but we checked it down and I think got like 10 yards on the check down. So, um, you know, we're going to continue to call our shots. That defense, we knew going into it, that defense, I think, was one of the leading defenses in the NFL last year at stopping the big play, uh, the real big play. So 
we were trying to call some to get him down there, but uh, they were just playing deep in coverage. JJ. Frank, you talked about frustration fueling focus. Where did you sense the defense was um, today when, when you know when you you kind of got them back in the building? I love our I love our defense. Um, you know, just hungry, hungry. You know, um, that was the other thing we talked about today. You know, just coming in here hungry and and humble today, right? I mean, we we ate a little bit of humble pie, so let's come in here hungry and humble. Um, because it takes that humility to, you know, for each one of us, coaches included, to say, I wasn't good. I was not good enough. I can be better. What can I do better? How can I be a better teammate? What can I do for this team to be better? And that humility is a lot of what fuels, you know, the growth, fuels, you know, the right things. And, and I think we got the right kind of guys on defense who, who, uh, who are thinking like that. Joel Erickson. Frank, uh, Carson's time to throw, I think, according to Next Gen Stats, was like 2.92 seconds or something like that. You guys have been, you know, more than that two and a half second range in the past. What do you think went into that yesterday? That's interesting. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't see that. So um, I'd have to see that over a bigger sample size. You know what I mean? I'd have to see that over a bigger sample size. Um, some of it's going to be because he can move around a little bit and extend plays. So that's just all, you know, I, my guess guys is that at the end of the year, after a 17 game regular season, my guess is that it might be a little bit more than what we have been in the past because of the nature of Carson as a quarterback. But my guess is he'll also create more big plays from, you know, getting out and extending plays than what we've had over the past couple of years. So that, that would be my guess. But but you didn't feel like he was holding onto the ball too long at all, really. Yesterday, not overall. I mean, yeah. Well, no. I'm glad you asked that. Honestly, there was there was there were two plays that in the game where I thought, oh man, I thought he should have had a chance if he had hung in the pocket there. He might have had so and so down the field. And I'm um, I'm thinking of two plays in particular that um, that at the moment. You know, I thought nah, that should have been a completion, just slide in the pocket. But when I looked at them both on film. And I think I have a pretty good eye for seeing it from the quarterback perspective. Actually, on both those ones that I was upset about in the game, I, I can see why he did what he did on those two plays. All right, we're going to go a couple more. Bob Kravitz. All right, Frank. Um, with uh, Aaron Donald coming in this week, what, what kind of a week do you think it's going to be for Quentin? I, I don't know how often they're going to line up across from one another, but it's obviously a, a marquee matchup on line of scrimmage. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a great week, and, you know, not only for Quentin, but for the whole O-line, you know. Um, you go up against a player like Aaron Donald, who, who and, and right, I mean, I know he's a one-man show, but really that whole defense is 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 an excellent defense. You know, you, he's obviously the key, and Ramsey's a great player, and so on and so forth. But you got, you know, last year they had number one defense in the NFL. Um, it starts with Aaron Donald up front, so... Uh, my experience is, especially with these guys and these players, is that kind of brings something about in you. Like, hey, I got to step up here. I got to rise to the occasion. I got to rise to the challenge. Um, and so, you know, I expect to have a great week of practice. Um, you know, that's really what we, fo you guys know, we focus on the process. You know, we try not to get fixated on all that other stuff, but um, the matchup within the matchup is a big deal. So, um, we'll work hard at it. I'm sure the O-line will, will as well, you know, starting with Quentin. Okay, last one, Stephen Holder. Actually, you know what, uh, Joel asked my exact question. About the All right, throw. Kevin Bowen. So. Frank, uh, obviously Carson took some pretty big hits yesterday. How did he come out of that one? Um, he came out well, Kevin. Um, he came out well. He did take, a, he did take uh, you know, there's one shot we'll, we'll be turning in. I thought it was a body weight shot. Um, you know, guy lands on where I think we're, you know, I, I know they must have just missed it, but because, I, you know, we're trying to eliminate that stuff. But um, he took a few good hits, but, you know, like we've all, you know, he's got that reputation of being a tough guy. I don't think it was as many hits as, uh, you know, like sometimes we, sometimes there's a lot of times he's getting hit that I know that they're counting as hits. And, but to your point and to others' points who know, who have noted it, there were a couple 
there were a couple pretty good vicious hits in there. And, uh, but that's not all bad as a quarterback, especially you when you do it, it kind of wakes you up and you, you're back in it. And uh, it's a strange feeling. It's hard to explain, but it, it brings out something in you. And I think it does. Is, I think it brings that out on Carson as well. So, um, yeah, he came out fine. All right. All thanks, right, guys. guys. Thank I appreciate you. it.